Hello everyone, this is Jack the Rambling Raconteur, and finished my second book for March Mystery Madness, John D. McDonald's Bright Orange for the Shroud. Of course, I'm rocking my orange shirt. And uh, it was okay. It was not my favorite John D. McDonald, uh, Travis McGee novel. It was, there were, there were aspects of it that I really liked. This was one of the rare, uh, I shouldn't say rare. This is one of the uh, Travis McGee novels where it's, it's actually set in Florida, like in its entirety. So if he famously has a houseboat that is uh, uh, moored in Florida. He wanted a, a card game, he calls it the Busted Flush. And so from his houseboat, he uh, periodically, once a year, every other year, goes on these missions to recover stolen goods or money. Um, and he then gives half of what he recovers back to the person. He takes off the expenses, gives half of what he recovers back to the person who it was stolen from and keeps the other half for himself. And that's how he just keeps this like easy houseboat lifestyle going. Uh, he's sort of a Philip Marlowe meets the 1960s. These novels were originally um, written in, uh, many of them in the 1960s, 1970s. This one is from 1965. So I, I've uh, read all the Travis McGee novels leading up to this one. I think this is the uh, seventh one I've read. Um, it would not, it would not be my favorite one. And there were, I enjoyed the Florida locale. Uh, I, I enjoyed that. But there were some aspects to some of the some of the violence, some of the violence towards women. Um, there was like uh, assaults going on, sexual assaults going on, and um, even though you know in the Traps McGee books, bad guys get their comeuppance by some some fashion, uh, it's still not something I really want to spend a lot of time reading or or or, or working on. And I haven't really seen that in uh, in the other books, so that was kind of a surprise with this one. Um, I'm hoping that as I read other books in the series later on, that doesn't happen. It doesn't continue. Um, in terms, in terms of some of the writing, it, it's, uh, it's good, um, without being like great and stellar. I would say some of his other books, particularly the, the two I really, really like are, um, A Purple Place for Dying, which has McGee going, uh, into the American West. Uh, and sort of some rural areas like I can't remember if it's Utah or California that he's or Colorado that he's out in, but it really really fun um, and interesting. And then a deadly shade of gold, which is it's a bit thicker, like you can tell, it's a bit thicker than the other books, um, and goes into like Western Mexico, Baja, uh, deals with like anti Castro Cuban exiles. I mean, just really fast, fascinating, really exciting. Uh, Bright Orange for the Shroud is set up in Florida. It deals with a, the, the, there's like a land scam. A friend of McGee's got caught up in. He's going to go try and find the money. It turns out that like the, the big bad of the, of the group involved in the land scam is, uh, is a guy who's like Florida man. Like he's grown up in Florida, navigates the Everglades, just a real unpleasant fellow. Um, very fierce, very ferocious, almost animalistic, um, but kind of knows the swamps, knows how to fish, knows how to, you know, know navigate those areas, and very violent, very aggressive. Um, as an example of sort of what the John, if you've never read John D. McDonald's, in terms of some of the action, you get things like this. He went into the house. I heard him talking to someone, then heard a faint female response. He came back smiling, buttoning his shirt, shoes on, and a straw hat and cowboy shape stuck on the back of his curly head. He had indeed a merry smile, and he stuck his hand out when he was six feet from me. As I took it, I saw the first flick of what the old man had warned me about, and I jumped to the side. The unexpected miss swung his heavy right shoe as high as a chorus girl kick, and at its apex, I chopped down across his throat with my left forearm, driving him down to hit the ground on his shoulders with a mighty, bone-rattling thud. He stared up at me in purest astonishment, and then he began to laugh. It was an infectious laugh, full of delight. Man, man, he gasped. You as rough and quick as the business end of an alligator gar. Taught old Boo a Sunday school lesson. He started to get up, and his face twisted. And so it gives you a sense, you know, the, 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 the books are packed with action. This one uh, dealt a lot more with, like, the, the Everglades swamps, with the western Florida, like Tampa, that area. Um, 
uh, we spent a lot more time on Travis McGee's houseboat than we have in maybe since uh, the very first book, The Deep Blue Goodbye, which again, I recommend that one. And this is a series overall that I recommend. This, this one, maybe not so much. I would recommend the others and say, if you're really interested in the Florida swamps, read Bright Orange for the Shroud. Um, but with, with some of the, the, some of the violence and specifically the violence towards women in, in this vault entry, um, it, it definitely left a sour taste in my mouth. Um, and again, I'm hoping that the, the other ones don't have that. Some other examples of some of the more, um, like prose, still like in McGee's mind, we get things like houses where love is dead or dying acquire a transient look. Somewhere there are people who, though they do not know it yet, are going to move in. Or later on, maybe the people who fit have some forlorn fancy about perfecting themselves in their own image, about living up to some darn thing always a little out of reach. But you try. You reach and slip and fall and get up, and you reach some more. And there's kind of a, there's, there's a nice Philip Marlowe-esque weariness to Travis McGee. Uh, like I said, he kind of feels like Philip Marlowe in the 60s. If you've seen Robert Altman's The Long Goodbye and you've liked that, these books might be something you really enjoy. Um, in terms of other things, kind of the emphasis on, on action and, and operating outside the law remind me a little bit of like Mickey Spillane's My Camera books. Or if you really enjoy those sort of like swamp stories, one of the better ones I've read is um, Redgrass River by James Carlos Blake. Uh, which is set in like the 1900s and goes up into Prohibition. So those are some to read, you know, if, you, if you're into those types of mysteries, those types of locales. But again, that this was my March Mystery Madness, Bright Orange for the Shroud by John D. MacDonald. Maybe start with a different John D. MacDonald and you're, work your way to this one. But thank you, BookTube. I'll be back uh, soon, hopefully with Young Joseph by Thomas Mann. Bye.